Hey everyone, uh, we'll be discussing part six of a suitable boy today. Uh, we're just waiting for Diksha to join in, and so that we can have this live on the way. Hello. Hello. What's up? Hi, Bisham. Hi. Do you do something to your hair? Mm, in the sense where I comb them, which is not how you usually see them. Yes. Okay then. Oh, I have something to tell you, which I'll tell you after the live, but it's quite exciting. Very okay. Exciting things. Thanks, Bisham. Thank you. Thank you so much. He's saying good luck. Thank you. Right. I mean, with part six, I needed luck just completing it. So I Absolutely. think we're definitely going to need luck uh, reviewing it. I know it's finally back to the part that I wanted it to come back to. No, it's back to all the parts possible. I mean, almost everyone's in this part. Yeah, and no, I know it's it's definite. So. Again, this is not part of the review, but anyway, Lata is not in the picture for this part again. But I got a sneak peek into part seven, and it starts with Lata. Hey, hey, come. Okay, I mean, fair. I mean, that's not a spoiler as such, but okay, that's yeah. great. Yeah. Okay, so, but let, actually, let's just wait for a couple of minutes. Otherwise, we'll end up discussing it. Sounds but, good. But yes, how's the? Have we told all of our followers what's happened on your? No, no, we, we don't have followers. You have followers, and I am a friend merely participating in this exchange with you. Ah, no, but someone uh, particularly commented about you on the previous IGTV that they like having this discussion with you. Thanks, Yash. Thank you so much. Thank you, Yash. See, followers. Yeah, for exactly Bisham, Yash, <laughs> and all these people, man, just. These regular fans, I tell you, just. <laughs> oh, everyone else, they're my friends, by the way. Just before this comes off as me being cocky and laughing at people. They're literally here because Siddharth basically forces them to join join the live. That's not true. Laughing. I don't force. I don't force anyone to join these lives. They're here out of the sheer goodwill in their heart, which is. <laughs> Which is there? I think that's like possibly the nicest thing you've said about them. Hey, I say nice stuff about a fan. Okay, <laughs> but um, I'm I'm actually liking uh, this thing. Like, I love that I'm reading this from uh, Shalab Chalo. Hi, okay. Hi, Shalab. Another friend has joined mm -hmm. the live. Clearly, but I'm I'm glad I'm doing this on paperback. I think you should also kind of. Switch from Kindle to paperback, yeah. It it feel hard, yeah. If for nothing else, then just for knowing how much time I need to dedicate to get through a part, I mean, I would not yeah. have expected this part to be this huge. There was some twenty oh, yeah. five parts or something. No, no more. I think twenty seven, twenty eight. The gear of yeah, I'll tell you. Yeah, and we're used to an average of like thirteen sub parts 20, per part. Yeah, twenty so. seven. Yeah, and I have a tendency of just winging things. Like putting them off to the end, so yeah, a hard bag would be nice for that aspect, I think. Yeah, and it's but a fun, nice I mean, one. interesting story. I did order a hard bag, uh, come uh, like a book, and like you couldn't find it on Amazon because obviously Netflix has made it too popular, etc. And Amazon delivered a completely different book to me, uh, which has very similar cover art. So you gotta give them props for that, like whoever the seller was. <laughs> um, very very similar cover art, but definitely not the same book. Which is why then now I have moved to my Kindle. I'm also one of those people who really prefers like paper books, paper books, paperback, hard paperbacks, paperbacks, paperbacks. Yeah. Oh, by the way, we've solved the crash issue for last time. I so I'm record screen recording the entire thing. So just in case it crashes, we have oh. Oh, this thing left. It's it's great that you get to do that because you still have an iPhone. But anyway, uh, should we start? Yeah. So uh, okay. Primary views. Okay, first, I think something that we saw from the previous two parts, the book, apart from its cheerful start, has just like dived into exploring the darker side of things. Because here, even though we are not into politics as much as it was in the previous two parts, we are back to uh, Man and Saida Bai are again the focus of this 
yeah major focus of this uh, part but again we are seeing a very dark and different dimension to the writing where we are exploring things which in a very subtle way of course but we are exploring things which idly you know were not as cheerful to look at right and i think that was something that was very obvious to me throughout and i'm glad that we are back on man and side up i was waiting to find out how this thing how all of this goes down that's and true. yeah you're saying something i said that's true i mean i was really excited for just progress because we've been hearing about it for so long but right. also now i think back of like our first impressions of part 1 Mm-hmm. and exactly the kind of criticism we had about you know the whole uh, political aspect of the city and people around it not being covered the religion aspect not being covered etc and as we move across each part that becomes more and more evident and that becomes more and more a central focus so mm-hmm. stupid of us uh, to judge part 1 based on something but yeah it's interesting that mm-hmm. you know we're doing this part wise and we get to sort mm-hmm. of have that realization as we're going through it right and uh, so one thing that was that clearly stood out for me here was the power dynamic in the entire man and saida by equation i mean it's 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 tragic to look at the entire thing i mean you have a young boy falling in love. like he's clearly like completely in love with this person and i mean as love in as he knows to be in yeah fair enough but then that's what you measure it by right like for a person you measure it by what they know it to be and not in terms of just measuring right. what they are feeling or like so, dirt exactly so the majority of the feeling older woman who uh, by all means would you would think would not necessarily be having the higher power just because of her profession and her right. everything where she stands in society and but she has like more control over man she's making him go through urdu lessons which he has to take every day this extremely careless person who has never committed to anything in his life is doing urdu lessons every day um and post which in her house post which she very often refuses to see him so he goes yeah. to her house learns urdu and then he has to go back home no and the the beauty of that was when we see this like there was this minor paragraph from her perspective right which spoke about how she decides that she she needs to see less of him because you know she doesn't want to get too attached and she has all these yeah. practical considerations about how what this weighs down on her profession and how she mm-hmm. has to keep an earning going for the house to uh, right. go on and everything right and i mean we do see affection on her end but for her it's clearly her uh, professional dynamic is something that she values way more than what like man has thrown everything away for her like he doesn't care but about think, anything else that's happening i mean just because of where she stands in society her gender and uh, her age she has so much more to lose right so she has to be more practical no no and I'm, I'm not, uh... and that's the thing towards the end so initially when you read about man and saida bai you assume that she's possibly not as attached etc especially in the part like going in in the first few uh, sections when they're covered you feel like maybe saida bai isn't too attached and that's why she keeps on sending him away but the part that you're referring to which was her in a monologue when he was moving yeah. away and she calls him a distraction and she's worried about her income because he's demanding so much of her time and her time is basically how she earns money right so uh i think that was really interesting because that made her a bit more of a smarter character not just a frivolous person who's just the right. sort of love interest or the person of affection for like a main character right you can see that right. she has her own brain she's thinking this through and she knows that the repercussions for that are going to be so much more on her when right. man mentions that mr mahesh kapoor is now getting involved uh mm-hmm. that's the question we had initially when we were wondering okay how does this go because she goes to mr mahesh kapoor's place to like sing at all major occasions and right. so on right. and you see that that's a true concern for saida bai so yeah. i really like that they showed her as not this very frivolous woman who's getting caught up with right. her like feelings and affections and she has she has to realize that there's real financial repercussions for her being involved with him right and i think uh, we saw this build up slowly across the book right where we see that um, we just keep learning tidbits about her past about her mother and how she's been very protective of her sister and she has this entire gamut of you know okay i've been somewhat treated roughly by society and i've been wronged in that sense but uh, so that's probably what makes her more calculative about what she's doing and what her next steps are going to be about things and yeah and i i think that just puts it uh, so it just puts the entire thing in a very interesting perspective right because uh, so 
I don't. I think both parties here know that the end game can't be like something is not marriage here for either of them. Like it's, or or even if it is, both of them are aware of the scandal they would have, uh, I don't know, caused. Uh, someone commented, <laughs> they wouldn't have known. Thanks, Maya. Maya, I'm so friend. Maya, I'm so friend with Maya. Oh, okay. So, uh, yeah. So I mean, both parties clearly know that. Like that's going to be a huge issue if at all. But um, Man is shown to be just this like careless person, doesn't give a, doesn't care about you know what the repercussions of him being with Saida by are to the extent that he doesn't. And one thing that I really felt, for, I know, felt for was the girl he's engaged to. Is just uh, I mean that didn't even like the thing is it doesn't even figure in his equations. He doesn't really like that's not There's even a no thought. Thought exactly. Yeah, the only like, time that girls brought up is when the parents are thinking about what's happening. Like Mark right. is not even. One like, mentioned, like he he does have that thought about oh what his father would think of it or like what his family would, as brief as it is. But like that post is just thrown across, and that just kind of just made me feel. And but I mean that comes from the writing style, right? The fact that it hasn't even her name's not been mentioned at even once. We don't even know who this character is. That really shows right? you how non-important this person is to Man or to like even the parents for that matter. And I think uh, in this uh, entire part, uh, even though it was very subtle, even though we were made to think that it's about you know Man and Saida Bai, I think the core of this part was the different power dynamics that existed in that society, right? I mean, we were right. speaking about uh, like the entire bit about Ustad Majid Khan and uh, Ishan mm-hmm. Bai, and it, it's like I was kind of, to be honest, I was kind of taken aback when like okay, we had another character introduced and we just had this entire dynamic being explored, and I was just wondering how this was you know tying into the entire picture. But I think this exactly. part largely was talking about how how there are different power dynamics and how people are going to continuously use them for their own personal gains, right? Like right. even like as we see at the end of I don't know if you want to give spoilers about what ma- happens with man. But uh, as we see, like Saida Bai does use her. At the end of the day, she does make a decision which favors her end more than the other. But it kind of just turns out to be like a neutral thing for everyone involved. That okay, That's everyone. That's so strange kind of... because I didn't really see it that way. So now, really? now that we're discussing, yeah, I yeah. did not see that as it favoring her as such. Yeah. Uh, I mean, the idea did come from her. So spoilers, but I'm assuming if you're watching this, you've probably read. the part mm. and so on but uh, man basically he's asked to leave like his father asked him to leave uh, brahmpur and uh, man uh, saida bai comes up with the idea that the urdu teacher who man is working with is going to his village and man should accompany him and keep learning urdu and will be a nice change of pace with that and i think while yeah obviously there are benefits to saida bai in having that one month free where she gets rid of like her distractive whatever mindset or whatever man is to her she tries to overcome that i didn't see that as uh, any kind of power play as such because i don't think things would uh, change for her if he went to uh, banaras or anything in any way no i from where i saw it it was her distancing herself from him without like completely cutting it off from him like, so like maybe may, able to keep a track of where yeah he... yeah, like, yeah yeah like like shutting the door but not locking it kind of thing because i think that was also mentioned in the that phrase is also mentioned in this uh, yeah. part but and go on yeah yeah i mean something like uh, maybe if he had gone to banaras maybe his parents would have had say a lot more say in it maybe his oh, sorry so may, hmm. maybe his fiance had like kind of would have been involved in the picture there would have been something or the other on that front right so right. i don't know maybe, maybe she saw it as that maybe that was a gambit but i don't know we probably will find out later into this listening but uh, that reminds me of the power dynamics bit reminds me of uh, something that was very subtly mentioned earlier in the earlier parts uh, about ishak bhai and uh, tasneem's yes. equation like okay tasneem shown to be very quite young and i i know i was kind of found it creepy earlier and even now because particularly so because uh, ustad uh, majid khan brings it up in that in their argument that they have yes. that you know you won't at least i don't float or at least my family members won't be floating with someone that young so clearly that is a thing i don't know if saida bai who is generally prone to know everything about like is on top of things in terms of what's happening around the But, city uh, she was aware of, she was aware of it definitely because she uh, 
there's this exchange between Tasneem and Saida Bai when Tasneem goes to ask Saida Bai if she can keep Ishak mm-hmm. on while he's injured, etc. And her first question is, is he troubling you? Uh, I think Saida yeah. Bai knows very well, like she's very well aware of like what talks are going on about her, her man, Tasneem. I think it's just, it's something she has to do. It's, she wouldn't no. be hurt if she wasn't aware and kept so- her watch, I think. So, A, the first thing when she said that, I think I just passed it off as like, you know, how you just have in a household, you just have someone just bothering the other person, not in a flirtatious way, just like mm-hmm. the other way. The other bit was because it kind of doesn't go fit well with me that she would have a very protective outlook towards the Tasneem, but at the same time be, I don't know, completely okay with Ishak Bhai kind of flirting with her. Because obviously it's not something, I, there's no indication that she approves of it. Or Definitely, she does, she does. Right. Because right. the last part, whenever we had the Tasneem and the Mia Mithu, which is a very, very strange name for a parakeet, uh, exchange being brought up, uh, the uh, it was very clear that Saida Bai didn't want Ishak spending time alone with Tasneem. He, she asked him out of the room and stuff. So definitely does not approve of it. I also think she has an idea, but she knows that she needs Ishak to be her sort of background. Music player, she knows Tasneem is too... Uh, too scared of her sister to actually do anything. And also the fact that this name keeps on calling him Ishak Bhai, I think is like yeah. a... And he constantly like keeps telling her, don't call me her. Bhai, yeah. which is again, like just kind of reordered me out. Yeah. Speaking of uh, power dynamics, so Mr. Mahesh Kapoor and the Nawab, again being my favorite yeah. friendship couple. I mean, I know, right? this is the couple I'm rooting for. The fact that they're on opposite ends and they're, the, the Nawab had to plot against Mr. Mahesh Kapoor with the Raja of Mar, who basically is the main antagonist of this book. If there's any character everyone that no one him. likes, yeah. Yeah, everyone yeah. hates him, including people on his side. Um, so, yeah, I mean, beautiful friendship, right? They, they're on opposite sides, but they... The, the oh, way... Yeah. They, 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 Your voice is waning and waxing. Wow, that was... Alliteration, great. Is it better now? Yeah. Yeah, so just uh, when Mr. Mahesh Kapoor sort of uh, comes to meet his friend and he meets uh, the Raja of Mar standing there and they have an altercation, it's really beautiful mm-hmm. when he apologizes to the Nawab and they both understand that it, they don't really care about the scene that happened right here because neither care about being respectful right. to the Raja of Mar and it's actually about everything else that happened and how right. heavily it sort of weighs on. Mr. Mahesh Kapoor, that he really wasn't there for his friend. And that wasn't because of some political uh, right. allegiance or some, uh, you know, otherwise something that he needed to do. It was just because he wasn't available and that's why he wasn't around. So, yeah, and the, uh, my favorite friendship couple is still existing, which I'm really happy about. Yeah, I completely am with you on this. Like, I mean, I love, like, I mean, I love the subtle bits in about their friendship throughout. I mean, like how, so you, we've shown how all these political figures or all these important figures, they, you know, have this habit of like sending a message across that we'll be arriving or for something, or, you know, we'll be here for this. There's some prior communication, but he's like, oh, you know what? I think I've just like, just let my friend down or whatever. I really need to fix this. Yeah. And he just like gets up and goes. It's truly a friendship in that sense and not a political consideration that, okay, yeah, Nawab is- no relationship of benefit for either of them. Exactly. Like, it's exactly. not about that. And even I'm... the, like, sorry. Even in the uh, library so far- when they meet uh, and the, so a lot of their uh, interaction is non-verbal, right? It's not, right. right? And and it's, that just puts across how close their friendship is. And I think I, I really love that. Bit. Like, I mean, that kind yeah. of. Yeah. And uh, so this part also speaks a lot about Man and now Man becomes, due to this incident, becomes friends with the Raj Kumar of Man and like they're mm-hmm. constantly gambling and his friends, etc. and so on. Uh I think uh, a true testament to their friendship, like both the parents, the Nawab and Mr. Mahesh Kapoor, is how Feroz and Maan are such good friends, despite whatever's going on with their parents, etc. And the fact that both of them are like these slightly spoiled children, but they are really good influence on each other and their parents have always been so nice to the other one's son, etc. Right? Versus the kind of reaction Mr. Mahesh Kapoor had when he found out that Maan Thanya or the Rajkumar of but like you can clearly see the difference. So for me, that was also like showed how close the sort of parents are. Right. And uh, that bit about Feroz and uh, Man, right? Like, I mean, I, I even I like that bit, like both of them are 
quite like two guys hanging out in their twenties. I mean, like when they so after one time, Feroz knows. Okay, listen, there's no point like talking to him about say the bye. Like we see that like that. Okay, that's done and dusted. He like they just do their own thing. Like he's teaching them. This it's a very cute friendship. I like it. I mean, it's it's just one of those. Yeah. But uh, speaking of that, the Rajkumar of Mar and uh, this thing that was I know it just played out really. I know oddly in my head like the entire this thing. But uh, and I also was left a bit confused at uh, but I think that was kind of deliberately done that uh, I think they have implied that both of them might either at least uh, Man might be bisexual while this guy may or may not be homosexual. Uh, the yeah. Rajkumar of Man and I mean definitely bisexual because there's so much talk about Rupati and how much he enjoys Rupati. So yeah, I yeah I mean but it just. I know. I I thought. I think uh, it was way too little to not be stressed upon. Like I mean, I kind of yeah. expect it's not just something that you mention. You leave, it's particularly yeah. in the build up to the book. Maybe it just leads to something else later on. But right now, it just kind of mm-hmm. like okay, just like a detail thrown in there. Yep. What do I make of it? There's, there's something that's going to come up, and uh, I didn't quite like the way that was mentioned because even uh, when we were introduced to Rajkumar's character, the fact. That he was described as someone who enjoys looking at the boys more, right? It 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 was explained as a character flaw, uh, or maybe I read it that way. I'm not sure, but that's the sort of way the author, the editor, whatever, had put it across as. Which obviously, like, it wouldn't fly now. It doesn't fly with someone like me. Like, I don't appreciate yeah. that. And even the way he made the pass on uh, Man wasn't. Yeah, was I mean, both of them were drunk, etc. Like. It just, I think, made the whole thing seem very cheap, uh, which I'm assuming was the intention. But I mean, we don't do that here anymore. So yeah, exactly what I was going to get at. I mean, it's that was one of the most common criticisms uh, I think uh, people get about uh, depiction of anyone, like any homosexual or bisexual equation in, like at least from uh, in any entertainment industry from that perspective. Somehow their moves are always shown as like. Non-consensual harassment, or like them co- coming on to another person, right? Instead of yeah. just being it being an organic evolution of things. So yeah, that exactly. I completely, completely get what you're saying. But uh, I know. I mean, it's and I don't even want to pass it off as like a generational thing that maybe when the book was written, it would have been okay because we. I mean, we've read enough by now to know that there were like much more poignantly written books back then as well. So it's not exactly. definitely not a generational thing. But yeah, unless like this translates into something from the character's perspective, like a, I don't know, just builds yeah. up something. I I really don't see a way out of it for Vikram Singh. Exactly. That's it. Uh, something else that kind of uh caught my fancy during this chapter was uh how uh the entire the like the letters that comes from uh Mrs. Rupa Mehra from Calcutta, which like you know just keeps us. a breast about what's happening in lata's life which is always interesting for everyone about so it kind of i think sets up uh, like the introduction for next the next part where i'm assuming we'll be meeting all the three guys that lata's hanging like the three guys she's friends with back there and clearly mrs rupa rupa mera is not very impressed with minakshi yet <laughs> She's still not forgiven her for melting her father her husband justice for minakshi man justice for minakshi I don't know. I don't know if there's justice to be done, dude. Like, I mean, at least, at least from whatever we know now, I'm not. Uh, I'm on Team Mrs. Rupa Mehra for now. At least from whatever <laughs> I know, it's not. I mean, actually, hasn't I really mean, earned a lot of brownie points on this front. It's it's really telling that the only redeeming quality Mrs. Rupa Mehra attributes to Manakshi is that she's the mother of Aparna. Yeah, it's just I don't know, and it kind of sets up a very inter- uh, interesting. introduction for the chatterjees right like we're supposed to yeah. apparently this is something i've read online that uh, chatterjees were like loved by a lot of people like in the book like in general I they love the chatterjee family i don't need this online chatter no i don't no. want to know it's it, it, no no it, it's it's it just i'm just saying it's like there are possibly interesting characters waiting to come so our wish from the third part i think that <laughs> let, let there no not be more characters. no new characters <laughs> that's definitely going down the drain how, but how uh, nice of us uh but I'm really yeah. This whole letter style, I think, is becoming a good way to introduce characters, and that's what we've seen from part one, right? The way new characters are introduced. So there's rarely ever a character like Ustad, Ustad mm. Majid Khan, who's introduced in this chapter, where suddenly this person's thrown in front of your face. There's always 
some character observing the new character or there's always uh, a letter which introduces new characters which i'm really enjoying because it makes you feel connected it makes you feel like there's this one person tracking the entire sort of community yeah. that sort of stretches out uh, so yeah that that's a really good writing style that i'm enjoying i love sajal's comment <laughs> rupa mera just needs a seema to pare in her life that's actually quite true oh damn i, I the, did this thing was this a thing i need to find this out like would th- would this have been a thing in 1950s getting like a matchmaker for you <laughs> <laughs> would would okay. this have been a thing yeah. like i don't know if if it was i would it would but be but it is right because uh, if you remember mrs rupa mera did write to like two three of her acquaintances asking about lata no, and rash no and that's different that's the general arranged marriage stuff which everyone does like but like a matchmaker is like solely tasked with their job like would a seema aunty have existed then that would be a but uh, sorry coming back to ustad majid khan's character um so i think uh, his character was very strategically introduced because his character is one of the major points from where i start seeing like the religious dynamic that exists in the city right like i think the first flying point was when uh, malti at her lesson calls him guruji yeah. and no was it veena who calls her i'm sorry no, one of ha veena calls her veena calls her guruji veena calls veena calls her calls him guruji and uh, he he just has a very like how can you call me guru and it is shown that like you know it's a thing that oh you can't call me by like it's something that you call a hindu professor or a hindu teacher or whatever and not this thing and uh, it's now starts being peddled throughout the book like now when you think back to the different parts that you've read and different references that there is it's clearly there that uh, there are references yeah. to how you know the conch blowing at the temple would interfere with the azan calls at the mosque and how all these things would play out and uh, and the other interesting bit was even the par dynamic shown by you know him being a grade a like one of the best uh, i had forgot the instrument he plays but like one of the best musicians in the city and you know very well revered uh, revered and yeah. like looked up and how that translates into ishak bhai's career ishak's career right like i mean he has yeah. an altercation with him and however un, like you know maybe ish, how much ever ishak's fault it is uh it clearly has a negative repercussion he stops getting work from air even though like we've seen that guruji is not like uh, ustad majid khan is not someone who put in a complaint or anything yeah i, right. I just made the same mistake but yeah so it, it just kind of very interesting that how uh, so even the, even at the end like there's that redeeming thing where he thinks that he might make a disciple out of him and you know he might find that uh, one person in him but it just kind of uh, things in a lot of perspective for me because i i would have assumed that ishak would solely by the kind of job that he has would have some clout earlier till this point of time like you know how yeah. if you're like given saida bai is like this really popular really well known person in the city for whatever it is she does have some clout like she has clout over the prominent people which would i was expecting would translate into some sort of clout for her uh, employees as well which clearly isn't the case like all of them are struggling more to turn this not as struggling in the same way as ishak is but ishak clearly is struggling and right. yeah that kind of just made me think a bit about how the power dynamics are going to be explored through this thing exactly and uh, what i really liked was this time uh, there was this entire sequence of mr mahesh kapoor meeting people as the revenue minister of the state and right. uh, all the things that we've read about right from the strike to the riots that happened to everything there was one one yeah. line which made you realize this is still happening yeah. just because you're yeah. hearing yeah. about it in first person and people describing it doesn't mean that there aren't more people of the town who care about it there were subtle me- uh, mentions of what happened at better house the nawab house etc also so mm-hmm. i think that is a writing style i really enjoyed because we didn't need to know more about it but also if that was right. ignored or glossed over completely we would have lost that sense of time whether we've actually right. come ahead of that or not for right. me the most uh, one of the cutest not that i i I'm, i don't like this couple but what i really liked was the whole up versus tum uh, yep. exchange between saida bai and uh, mm-hmm. man where she starts calling him uh, tum uh, mm-hmm. which is more like personal etc so i i found that really cute and uh, i remember one of my first uh, criticisms while reading part 1 and 2 was the fact that while it's based in brahmapur it's so anglicized this book that you don't you miss out subtle 
things and right. that's becoming lesser and lesser now because there are a bit like a lot of hindi and urdu sort of thrown in the middle so that the readers sort of understand right. it and that whole app was it was a really nice exchange and it made you sort of also like the couple or like see some kind of progress in terms of feelings or if you want to be a very calculative person then maybe saida by uh, being calculative and manipulative depending on how you read this couple but like it showed you that they are progressing from what they were and it's uh, there's some growth so that For i really sure. enjoyed yeah, like it also have yeah sorry yeah go on sorry you, no, i was no, moving I... to new thing so if there's anything no about... no no for me it was just that transition from it maybe going from like a purely professional thing because i'm sure saida bhai by this point of time in her life is used to people falling in love with her that is something that's mentioned a couple of times that you know people hate on her for ruining marriages and what not so and that's why like you could see that professional thing like aap is a formal way of addressing someone but maybe like now she is actually thinking of him as someone involved in her life so it's moved on to more personal thing that's about it. Yep, that's true. And uh, also, my favorite couple was back, and they were being extremely cute. This is Vina and uh, uh, Kedarnath, where Vina had, in the last part, given off her jewels to a friend to sort of pawn them off to make it easier for Kedarnath because there was financial mm-hmm. issues happening. And then Kedarnath sort of asked her to get that back, and there's this very cute, sarcastic exchange they have. And also, then he goes to Vina's father and like tells her that tells him that this is happening, etc. And you can. uh when mr mahesh kapoor sort of has that uh, whatever altercation i don't know if whatever i'm he has this son there's this yeah there's this uh, warm feeling in his heart about kedarna that he's like my son in law refuses to take money from me even when he needs it for his business yeah. my son has gambled everything away also i want to call out that uh, the infamous slap scene that you were waiting for which you saw trailer for finally happened yeah. so um, um, i i i, I was yeah yeah it kind of did because um, i mean i could see the entire okay so for me mahesh kapoor's anger was building up right like i mean we see that he saw like he was this was referenced during his uh, time in the legislature the even when he's like when his wife's reading out the debate room and like just mentioning household items and uh, he you know we see that okay he's on the edge like he's he just goes on about about how everyone around him is just like talking about this the pewns his wife everyone's just telling him the same thing yeah and he's like you know i'll get to it and suddenly like the pushing point like is that night like when he realizes that okay he's not only blown up the money that he gives him also the money he got here for business he's drunk and like just i mean i can see why mahesh kapoor would be losing his shit at like what was happening so yeah it was yeah. it was quite uh, like quite jarring a scene to read like in a good way but like really this thing that's true and uh, what i found really interesting two aspects just very quickly about the nawab and his family there was this very enduring scene with the nawab and his daughter where she confides in him about her husband cheating on him and the nawab who previously had done that in his marriage and then grew to love his wife who has now yeah. passed away uh, sort of saying to like hold on and how it will get better but how upset he was which we were speaking to last time where we realized that the nawab is actually a very soft character who is actually very in touch with his feelings that you wouldn't expect from a very imposing man like him and i really like whenever they mention feroz uh, because i think mm-hmm. feroz proves as a very nice antithesis to man right feroz is more controlled more career oriented he also seems to have some yeah. kind of interest in that theme it's hinted at not as explicitly obviously but he's definitely yeah. interested to know a little more about her but he's no way that direct he also tends to lecture his friend and then stops him self from doing that etc so as pe- two people who are in exactly the same situations who grew up together i really like that both of them are mentioned always in conjunction because you can see what a feroz would do as a what a man would do is completely opposite right. and so, i wonder if this would sort of build up later as feroz and maybe if his feelings with us name sort of get more uh, passionate or something would he pull off a man i don't know so that, I'm really liking where this is going in terms so of strategy. So I I have a theory which kind of flies in the face of all this. Like not about so okay so whenever we notice Feroz's reference to Tasneem, it's always about he has some inexplicit like feelings this thing about life. yeah some previous life something and uh, there is this uh, shady thing that's going on that like the Nawab sent like a letter or like money to Saida by so no. I don't know I don't Sister? know what to. Is the yeah. name step sister? I don't know. Maybe it's just it, like there's a good possibility there. That's all I'm saying. Like it's it's not way too off a theory in that sense. I mean, 
I don't know. Oh, I mean, I, it, I it hope just, you're wrong because I've been reading that completely as a romantic interest. And if that, no, guy, I mean, <laughs> that was my initial reaction as well. But then I just started thinking. Like, so for me, the intriguing bit was the a uh, bit about nawab the nawab insisting that you know feroz shouldn't be the one yeah, interacting with saida by delivering this thing so i don't know i mean if that's something that kind of plays out there but i i don't know i don't know how to read read that equation so i'm not going to think a lot about it i'm just going to leave it there but that but, is the possibility that crossed my mind yeah and also uh, so initially i remember thinking maybe mahesh kapoor and saida bai had like some kind of something yeah. when he, but clearly that's not the case at all he truly seems to enjoy her singing and that's all there is to it i know i mean see uh, so apparently there was again reference to how mahesh kapoor also had a lively youth despite being a freedom fighter yeah. or whatever so i don't know could be a possibility of something not manic yeah. but like i don't know being some would have yeah. enjoyed her company and, or something all uh, just one last thing moving away from the characters and back to like the city and the political climate there's one sub part which just speaks about sort of tensions within the congress whether mr mahesh kapoor should start his own party and like mm, nehru yeah. not in joint congress and so on so let's see if that becomes something because they wouldn't like there's this uh, old freedom fighter who's now a professor or a teacher or something and he comes and speaks about how they should break out in the congress party etc so i think right. that would also become a huge plot point because i i don't think any of these things are unintentionally mentioned i'm sure they get yeah and, and and i really like how they're weaving in uh, like factual history into this and a bit right i mean nehru being upset about how tan uh, tanden is elected president and everything that yeah. kind of just ma- makes it slightly more realistic but that reminds me when you mentioned uh, the university prof- the freedom fighter being a professor somehow uh, kabir is absent from the entire thing like there's no uh, reference uh, i don't know about mm-hmm. whether where is he what is he thinking about uh, like i mean because uh, i am assuming either it's a very well kept well kept secret about uh, you know how his affair with lata or i don't know i mean i would assume that because everyone involved has something or the other right so yeah. and oh also also uh, call back to my one of my favorite equations bhaskar and the professor like we there's just a very Mr. tiny Mr. reference Mr. that is he's at yeah he's at mr durani's house but clearly the two mathematicians are enjoying themselves which is something i really also uh, a very interesting comment here uh, about how vividly the characters are written that's exactly what i also felt i i don't think i've in a book sort of been able to picture imagine and expect characters to do uh, things so quickly as i have been with this so definitely that was like a huge point for me also which is very striking and i think uh, very surprisingly this part in itself gave me a very good example for this exact thing the part that i was constantly talking about the slap that i saw in the trailer even though i knew it was coming at some point or the other and even when i started reading that sub part about i knew this is going to go down that road uh the description of the scene and like the anger and the emotions of each character being described or however the writing has been really made it extremely involving and very vivid in my mind so i kind of get where this is coming from like it's a very like the characters are very well written like they have you yeah. can associate personalities with like certain depth and like certain like I, you you would be at that place in life where you would be like oh i don't expect this from them or like i don't know yeah. from some characters Oh, on that front, Pran and Kedarnath, like what son-in-laws, man? What son-in-laws? Like they've set set some <laughs> different standards all together. But uh, I like them both. They are really good characters. I mean, like both their equations with their wives. Like Pran and Savita, we know it's a arranged marriage. They barely met for fifteen minutes. But uh, you can see, I I don't know if it's like the first year of mar- first couple year of marriage, while a romance that is being there. But you see that he's okay. He's really like concerned about savita and they have a good equation and same goes yeah. for kedarnath and veena as you mentioned earlier like that uh, the equation between them is just like both of them like and i don't know if this is uh, how are they like put in particularly to like this contrast certain characters like against man's character or maybe any other character that will we'll be hearing of subsequently but uh, i don't know like it's it, sometimes i just think like they're too good to be true <laughs> Like I mean, the Lata's, very, very... Uh, Lata's suitable boy has a lot to live up to, basically. Yeah, yeah. Like I mean, I mean, dude, like the entire bit about Kedarnath, not uh, like clearly he's in some financial trouble. Maybe not down in the doldrums, but to the extent that you know, oh, you know what, you can't really like mortgage your jewels, get them back. Going, his 
uh, father-in-law offers to help him and he just like no i mean it's not that big a deal like i don't know these things just put it in some context to me i don't know i was just thinking about either and there's a very to... there's a very nice exchange when he goes to return those jewels and uh, mr mahesh kapoor says that you should work on our sort of land or whatever and come work with us uh and he says uh, he obviously refuses that but he also says if i leave the mystery monday then who would sort of look after your constituency okay, which is like yeah. you could see that this while well, obviously he's been married for a while to mr mahesh kapoor's daughter but like that's such beautiful banter i feel uh, that really speaks to how both of them are extremely respectful of each other but still have that joking relationship and it's not yeah. very so while uh, the relationship from either end that actually really nice. that actually also gave me like an idea like i don't know i was thinking along the lines of if like would mahesh kapoor actually at some point want him to succeed him in politics like that like, would be really interesting because he comes from lahore so he has all of that going for him yeah uh, and and he clearly has a foothold on the constituency his work is unlike prans like the other possible person who i could have thought like as a successor in that sense anyone yeah. on that front could take over his position but like this was him who is aware of you know the different dynamics in the mandi exactly. and everything like has an understanding of the constituency and everything so yeah i mean i think in all in all i think i found the part quite to be quite interesting like the stories progressed yeah. on like a lot of fronts very quickly along a few lines there are a lot of unsolved things clearly left and we are about what a third into the book we're no yeah, 28% 28% oh, oh right sorry sorry the kind right so we're 28 30% into the book and yeah i'm loving it so far i mean it's quite uh, interesting and this thing i'm really looking forward to the next part same and uh, very interesting because this uh, part was also sort of very away from what the first five parts have been which have been completely with one character sort of point of view and like one center yeah. character and the interaction this just had everyone and they kept coming yeah. back and forth and so on so clearly we're moving more like we're done sort of developing characters at least for this group of people and now we're moving towards right. like actual story building up etc so we're over that hump which i'm excited about yeah, yeah. i i think uh, while we discussed about part 5 not being our favorites and felt like it was out of a different book uh, this was also written very differently from the first four parts but i think this felt true to what we've been reading and it was yeah. i think it was a good part same I, i quite liked it i mean it was just i think it just changed the tone of what we were doing in the first few parts and right. just created a more mature tone which is generally something difficult to digest but like generally likable so yeah i think that's that's about it that's what we have for you for this discussion uh, we'll be back next sunday where we'll be discussing part 7 uh i think um, there's something i wanted to talk to diksha also about maybe we could do like the two like where we do two parts in a week probably sometime in october not in september because i have my exam coming up so but yeah uh, we'll be back with part 7 next week we'll be announcing the time soon but it'll all probably in all probability be like 6 pm Okay, so uh, do DM us with your comments and check it out. Check out this video on IGTV, and we'll be putting it up on YouTube as well next week. Bye bye. Bye. Hope all of you loved that episode. If you did, don't forget to like, share, and subscribe to our channel and our podcast. Please tell us how you like this podcast through the comment section below. We'll be back with another amazing episode of the Kitabi Garvan podcast. Thank you for listening.